Welcome back, design students. In this next phase of the rabbit project, we're going to begin to unwrap the rabbit, and we're going to lay out what are called its UVs. And we're going to create what's called a UV template, and we're going to open that UV template in Photoshop and paint our coloring on the rabbit. Unwrapping this rabbit will also help us apply other effects, such as fur and bump maps, to make it look like fabric. When we apply a texture, to a 3D model, we need to tell the computer which way to project the texture onto the mesh. And this process is called UVW mapping. And U, V, and W stand for X, Y, and Z. They are the same coordinates. For this separate process of projecting textures onto the mesh, we need to use letters other than X, Y, and Z so the computer can understand which process it's working with. So U is X, V is Y, and W is Z. In your main menu, you'll see a menu item called UV. And under there, you'll see a lot of different tools. Looking at these tools will tell us something about the process of UV mapping. Under here, you'll see all of this group right here. Automatic, best plane, camera-based, contour, stretch, normal-based, cylindrical, planar, and spherical. All of these tell the computer how to project the texture onto the mesh. Planar is the most commonly used one, and we'll use that one a lot. After that is cylindrical and spherical. In planar, the computer is simply projecting the map onto the mesh like a two-dimensional plane. In cylindrical, it's wrapping it around the mesh cylindrically, and spherical is self-explanatory. This other group down here has to do with cutting the mesh into pieces to apply UV projection onto it. And these up at the top open the UV editor, which we're going to open in just a little bit. Also under the UV menu, you'll see the 3D cut and sew tool, and that's what we're going to use to cut seams into our mesh so that we can lay out our UVs on the UV template. In Maya, there are also some UV editing and projection tools in your poly modeling shelf right here. Here's planar projection, cylindrical, spherical, and the other cut and sew tools are down here. There is also a UV editing workspace, which we're going to switch to in just a second. So let's get started. Let's start by going to the channel box and toggling the visibility of our reference planes because we don't need them right now. And then let's select our mesh, turn off smoothing by pushing 1 on your keyboard, and rotate the view so that we're looking at the rabbit straight on. And then let's switch to the UV editing workspace. And when we switch to the UV editor workspace, the UV editor window comes up and that's what would come up if we clicked this menu item right here and it's docked over here and we have the UV editor window and we also have the mesh window here the viewport the UV editor window has a grid on it and this center grid is where the UVs will generate from as you can see since I have the mesh selected and I'm in the UV editor the current UV projection of the mesh is laid out here in the UV editor and it's it's a mess. If we were to apply a texture to the rabbit right now it wouldn't look right at all. Also in the UV editing workspace we now have a UV toolkit which is over here and there's all sorts of things in here we're going to use a few of them. And then there is your tool settings window here and these are the tool settings for the UV toolkit. And then of course you still have your attribute editor. Notice that some of the mesh here has green edges highlighted on it. Those are the current seams in the mesh that the UV editor is assuming I want to use. That's why this is such a mess, because these seams are all over the place. They're not consistent. In addition to that, no projection has been defined for this object. So let's start by doing that. Let's go to the UV menu item, and we're going to select camera based. And when we do, you can see that our mesh sort of appears here in the UV editor space as the mesh. But it's still not right. 
It's not laid flat so that we can put texture on it. Before we start to uh, cut seams on this mesh, let's look over here in the UV Toolkit at the selection options. We have Face, Edge, and Vertex. And notice the mesh changes as we select different selection methods. And then over here we have two new ones. This one allows us to select uh, vertices on the UV mesh and move them around. And that doesn't affect the uh, 3D mesh. And then this one allows us to select UV shells. And right now our rabbit is just one big UV shell. And we're going to use the cut and sew tools to create separate UV shells and apply different projection to them to make our UV template. So we're going to use the 3D cut and sew tool to define seams that will allow us to split this mesh apart and create UV shells. This 3D cut and sew tool works very nicely on a PC, but if you're working on a Macintosh computer, particularly a newer high resolution Macintosh computer, you're going to have to change the system preferences for the program. Ask your teacher how to do that, and if your teacher's not available, you can click the link in the description for this video to find the solution and implement it yourself. So let's start by selecting the 3D Cut and Sew tool, and you'll see that the cursor changes right here. It's now a little white pointer. So let's create our first seam. So let's make sure the uh, 3D Cut and Sew tool is selected, and that Edge Mode is selected, and that Symmetry is turned on. And then what we're going to do is start with the ears, the base of the ears. So click on that first edge and then and then hold down shift and click on all the edges that go around the ears. And notice now we have a white seam in our UV editor around the base of the ears. And then we need to come over here to the UV Toolkit, find Cut and Sew, and click Cut. And that is now a UV seam. And then we can double click on the edge that cuts the ears in half. And notice now it doesn't go all the way down. That's because we've cut a seam here. And click Cut. Now we have a seam there. And then let's double click on the uh, edge that defines the inside of the ear. And if for some reason it doesn't go all the way around, simply hold down shift. And if you select an edge you don't mean to, just hit Control or Command Z. And make sure that you've selected that edge that goes all the way around. Let's see, I didn't quite get it. And then click Cut again. And we now have cut the ear into one two, three pieces. So now let's switch to UV shell selection, get the move tool, and grab these different pieces and move them out away. Oops, now that means I didn't get my seam didn't, uh, on that piece my seam didn't go all the way around. So let's try to figure out why that is. Well I explored that thoroughly and now it appears that it just works. So. I don't know what that was about. But just select these pieces and separate them like so and move them away. And now what we need to do is apply a projection to them. So select two of them, like these are the back sides of the ears here, and then come up to UV Planar and select the Planar Projection Options. And this is the Z axis you can see from my Move tool here. So we're going to select Z and click Project. And that puts the ears here in the center and makes them quite large. And then we're going to turn on something called the Checker Map. And that tells us how well the projection is going. And what we're going to try to do is keep these checkers the same size throughout the whole mesh and also keep them square. So as you can see, they're very small on the back side, but they are relatively square. So let's get the scale tool and we're going to see if we can make them any squarer. And then 
we're going to scale them down a lot. Now I'm scaling them down with the understanding that all the UV shells I'm defining must fit in this one square. So they need to be relatively small. So I'm going to make them kind of small. And then I'm going to switch to my move tool by pushing W on my keyboard. I'm going to move them out over here. And then we're going to do the same thing for this other part of the ears. And that will be in the same direction. And that is the inside of the ear as you can see. Look at the checkers, get the scale tool, see if I can make them any square, and then make them relatively small. And I'm trying to make them so they're around the same size as these. Put them over here. Then we're going to grab these two pieces and do the same thing. They'll pro still project in the z-axis. See if we can make the squares squarer. We can. So now we've unwrapped the ears. We have a little distortion here on the sides. You can see the checkers are a little weird here, but that's okay for this particular model. And when we come back in the next video, we're going to do the head. And I'll see you then.